So I'll just give you a brief intro to what the Longitude Prize is, and then I will leave you with Kathy, who's going to do actually um, a reading of some sci-fi stories that we commissioned, which is the first time this is happening, so it's very exciting. So the Longitude Prize is a global competition to, tra to try to tackle the problem of antibiotic resistance. It was launched in 2014, and it was actually uh, the British public who voted for antibiotics to be the subject of this pot of money, totaling 10 million pounds. Um, we held a public vote uh, with the support of the BBC, and, and again, people chose for antibiotics to be the subject. Um, to give you an idea of the context, other topics were equally important and were things like food security, paralysis, dementia, um, clean oceans, and, and so forth. So we've got, I just wrote it down, the most updated figures is we have 209 teams from around the world registered to compete, which means that they're working on ideas to come up with a test that is quick, easy to use, and affordable in all healthcare settings, and will quickly tell healthcare practitioners, be they GPs, um, surgeons, community health workers, whether the infection you have is viral or bacterial, and if it is bacterial, what antibiotics you need to use. Or um, it could also say whether the bacteria is susceptible or resistant. So basically something to really quickly and easily help guide treatment. Um, I'm just gonna run you through how the price works. Um, it comes, starts with an idea, like most things. Um, then you really easily and quickly register on our website, which is just longitudeprice.org. We provide ongoing support, um, and it's quite flexible because you can apply every four months, and we have, we have rolling deadlines uh, quarterly. Um, the prize runs until September 2019. That's the last time you can apply. However, there is an urgency to this, not only because of how pressing the problem is, but because the, it could be won at any time. So while it will remain open if no one wins, people have already submitted, we're already reviewing applications. If you are successful in your application, you then go and receive feedback from our panel, from our longitude committee, um, and we're really proud to have really sort of um, pioneering people in this area like Dame Sally Davis, who is Chief Medical Officer for England, working closely with us. So we're quite fortunate to have that kind of influence and input. If you go through, through their assessments, you would undergo clinical trials and eventually down the end of the road, you would receive eight million pounds to um, take your product to market. And the whole time you would have support from us. Um, this summer, we actually completed the first round of our seat funding, which was called the Discovery Awards, where 12 teams got very small seat funding to help sort of prepare their idea to be able to fully apply for the prize. That was with money from GSK and with BIRAC, which is um, a biotechnology research council in India. So we had a few Indian teams win as well. And we're pleased to say that Merck has now stepped in and we're able to do a second round of seed funding. So that's just to help teams progress their ideas to be able to apply. Um, in terms of the fields of people involved, it's quite broad. Um, it's really diverse, which is what's sort of really exciting about this prize, that you don't, we don't only see microbiologists or sort of chemists who you think would be involved in this sort of stuff, but we have mathematicians, we have people with business backgrounds, um, we have physicists, I mean, you see a few of the examples here, and we very much encourage collaborations to take place because of, as we've heard today, and as you've heard in most sort of discussions around antibiotic resistance, you need loads of different skills and perspectives to really um, come up with some kind of solution. And the, the pictures at the bottom are just some of the imagined prototypes of what a winning test could look like, but by no means are they prescriptive. So the main aim of this, of this competition, uh, which is the UK's biggest science project also, um, is you know, it's quite technical. It requires a, a certain amount of technical knowledge and, and skill and experience. To, to be one. However, the, the problem affects everyone, and we can all do um, a small part in preserving our antibiotics, things like washing our hands. I was here to, uh, happy to hear about hand hygiene earlier today. Um, completing our dose, um, not sharing doses, things that I'm sure all of you know well, but the public maybe not so much. So one of our public engagement activities is Superbugs. Uh, you might have seen these leaflets outside. Um, Superbugs is a mobile game. It's free to download for iPhone and Android, iPhone and i whatever, iPhone and Android tablets. Um, and you basically have to sort of have 
bacteria in a petri dish that you chuck antibiotics at, and it all goes very well, but eventually, soon enough, you find out that the bacteria are not responding to the antibiotics and are not dying, so you need to wait for a new antibiotic to become available. So we did this for kids um, aged 11 to 16, but we've, we've gone to the Science Museum with it in London, um, New Scientist Live did a conference we went to as well, um, and we're going to a few science centers um, in the next few months to, to sort of get kids involved and play the game and hopefully download it at home. We also want to um, speak to teachers to try and get it into schools. So it's just sort of a fun, free, easy way for hopefully kids to sort of try and begin to understand the dynamics of what happens and why they also have a role to play in preserving antibiotics. Um, the other public engagement activity we did is Infectious Futures. Um, we did this summer 2015 uh, and we asked a few sci-fi authors to pitch us stories about an imagined future where antibiotics don't work anymore. And we got some really cool submissions. We chose six and we shortlisted them and I was giving out the booklet outside. Um, I've run out now, so I should have brought more, but they're also online. So if you Google Infectious Futures, um, there's a PDF you can read. Um, and we're really excited that Kathy's here to read two of them which she chose. Uh, this has never been done before, so I'm quite looking forward to it. Um, I'll, and I'll be here for the rest of the day. So if you have any further questions about the prize, um, please get in touch. That's our Twitter handle, and I'll leave this slide up for Kathy to talk over. Thank you.